Holy Wire Mod here. It's tutorial 8 in Expression 2 series where I'm going to be covering for, while, and for each loops. So let's get some persist going. We're going to have i for now. So we're going to have a while loop. And a while loop is a loop which repeats itself so long as the condition within the parentheses are met. So we are going to say there's some control which is going to be i in this case. And so long as i is less than 10, repeat everything in these brackets. So we're going to say print counts, and we're going to say plus i, which is going to give us the, the current count of the loop. And we're going to i plus plus, which remember, that's simply saying i equals i plus 1. So we can do that, and this is what happens. It prints from 0 to 9 instead of from 1 to 10. Well, you can change that by putting the i++ in front, or you can increase this to 11 and initialize i equal 1 at the beginning, but putting i++ in the front is a little bit better. So let's do that. And I'm going to count to 6 for now. It's not so much. So we have 1 through 6 right there. Alright, now if I want to, for some reason, break off from the loop, like in the middle of it, middle of it I want to count to 3 for some reason, um, I would say break, which is going to, when i is equal to 3, it's going to see this and jump to the end, skipping all further repetitions of the loop and just exit the loop completely, so it's going to count to 3. 1, 2, 3. Alright, now if we want to um, go to the beginning of the loop for some reason, we put the continue command and it's going to increment i, print out the count, and it's going to see this and jump back to the beginning, completely skipping over this if statement. So it's going to completely count to 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Alright. So we have another version of loops called the for loop, which you have i, which is going to be your control again, just like last time, except you initialize it to some value, so I'll say 1, and then you have a final value, let's say uh, 6, and the third part is how much you're incrementing by with each pass of the loop. So I'll increment by 1 each time. So if we have that print command, we'll do print count again, and we'll put our i right here, and we'll also i++. plus plus. Actually, no, we'll do it at the end because in this form, it doesn't matter with the for loop, because i is already initialized as 1, so we have 1 through 6, just like before. Now, if I want to count by 2s, so I'll put a 2 here, and it does 1, 3, 5, 3s, and so on. And, and that also goes for here. You can change the starting point and do that for you real quick. So you have 0, 1, 2, 3, just to see how it works. Now, we also have a different variant of a loop called the for each loop, which is very useful as it goes through in a list, a table, an array, or something like that. We'll go for an array right now since we're more familiar with that. And um, we will say this array is a composition of a bunch of numbers. So let's just say you're going to the zoo with your family. You have your brother. You have your mother, your father's going to, your cousin, and your friend, or your your eight-year-old friend. I know it's not weird or anything, right? So, anyway, regardless, this for each loop is going to take some k, which is going to represent the index position of the array. Then we're going to have v of some type, so it's going to look through the array for the given type, and it's going to associate v to whatever the value is if it's the matching type. If not, it's not going to bother with that, So, or it's not going to matter. Um, and then you're going to say what t uh, table or array you're referring to, so we're referring to array, so we're going to type array right here. All right. And when we do this, we're going to say, let's say, in order to get into the zoo or whatever, anybody who is over the age of 21 
pays five dollars. They get a discount for being old. So we're going to say whenever v, which is going to be the number, is greater than 21, then cost, which is going to be a defined variable or a defined number to hold the cost or the total cost, is going to equal cost plus five dollars. So five dollars right there. So else, if you are actually younger than 21, cost is going to be ten dollars. And then at the end of this, once the loop is done executing, I'm going to say print total cost. And then put the cost right here. So it should give me something around, what, we got 1, 2, that's 15, 25, 35 total cost. So as you can see, it says 35 right there. That's exactly what we want. Now, it, just to give you an idea of the data types, or what happens in the instance when, let's say you have a type vector, and we'll say right here, we'll say result, which is going to be a vector result, so we'll put it as type vector, and we're going to throw some vectors in here, so we'll say vector of 0, 0, 0, and we're going to have a vector of 1, 2, 3 familiar numbers, I'm sure, from prior videos. And we're going to say that the result is equal to result plus v. And that, let's modify this to result real quick, and that right here is going to look through each vector, this entire thing is going to look through each uh, element in the array, I'm sorry, and look for the vectors and say the result, which this vector is equal to result plus a vector 0, 0, 0, and then it's going to get to this vector and say this vector 0, 0, 0 plus this vector of 1, 2, 3 is equal to the new result. So our final result should be an addition of these two vectors, which will be 1, 2, 3. And we get that in the chat down here. So that should give you a general idea how the for each, the for and the while loops work. On the next video, I'm going to be getting into sound play. So, thank you for tuning in, and I will catch you next time.